because I know there's advisors out there listening in right now. They're like, but I don't want to give away all my good stuff for free in the first meeting, right? Now, I know you get into charging a fee for, for the advice and everything, but if you said here's two or three pieces of value or hooks that I have found to be very beneficial in a first, yeah. what, what sort of things would you be talking about there? So just to that previous point, give away all your best stuff right away. Do not hold it back. The, the, the lie that the client is going to take it and do it on their own, none of us have time for that. Uh, or that they're going to go and find another advisor and teach them to do it for them because that advisor didn't bring that idea to them, never happens. And if somebody wants to take it and do it themselves, it's probably saving you because you didn't want them as a client anyways. So first thing I would say, bring your A game right away. Don't hold back because you're, you're just hurting yourself. We break up meeting ideas into concepts and strategies. Concepts are like the investment decision filter or the three bucket approach or uh, a Roth versus IRA. Like these are teachable moments that you can just weave in whenever you want. To, and, and they're really excuses to get up to the whiteboard and create that coach relationship and give yourself authority. Because I don't know if Brad in a first meeting is going to share enough data with me for me to actually show him a strategy that's relevant. Mm -hmm. Most likely you will. But if we're in a first meeting and you tell me you own a business, I might ask you, uh, hey, Brad, you know what QBI is? Uh, I don't think so. What's well, qualified business income deduction? That was changed in the past tax code. Did you know that if you pay yourself the right way, you can take 20% off? The and I'm on the whiteboard illustrating this concept to them. And they're like, oh, I, I've never heard of it explained that way. That's great. Uh, cost segregation. I'm not the CPA that's going to file the tax return on that. But if I can teach you what cost segregation is because you mentioned you own a commercial building, and I show you how you can accelerate your depreciation and get 150 grand back this year. Okay, now what will you do with 150 grand? Well, I'd probably buy another building. Okay, great. Let's talk about that. It's this free flowing experience, which the 25 advisors that just left our office that showed up on Monday morning selling investments and insurance and left Tuesday afternoon saying, wait, I can actually charge a fee for this because my, my ideas and time have value. It's a transformative kind of way of approaching our business to say, hey, you'll keep managing money. You're, keep, you're going to keep doing insurance, but maybe don't try to calculate this, but imagine calculating how much time and ideas you've given away for free in the past because you didn't value it. Therefore, you weren't able to communicate the value of it. And so for us, that's all of our teachings are in teaching advisors how to think differently and communicate their value and even understand it so they're confident saying, even if you don't pay me for it, I'm going to give you this experience that makes the close on the next thing so much higher. But I would also challenge every advisor to say, your time and ideas are valuable. And there's a lot of clients out there that would prefer to pay you up front for that as opposed to buy something too quickly. That, um, that is something, let's just hit on that concept for a second, because I think sometimes, unfortunately, in the world of financial advising world, we have the curse of knowledge. And we, we think like, oh, I've got to do something. You know, I'm, I'm halfway through Elon Musk's new biography that Walter Isaacson just wrote. And it's stellar. A lot of learnings there. But Elon has this concept of first principles thinking that he used to build SpaceX, Tesla, all the other stuff he's doing. But it's like break things down to the core basics and then rebuild them from scratch the right way versus just iterating on old builds that were probably built in the wrong way in the first place. And I think, unfortunately, we do that a lot in finance of like, oh, I've got to do this appointment process because here's why. This is how we're supposed to do it. But let's go to the paying for advice because what i've seen often like the lowest moments for a lot of financial advisors they go do that first appointment they're like wow there's like three big gaps that i've helped lots of my other clients solve i can absolutely crush these things it's a no-brainer they go back and they like build this masterful plan that they pour their heart and soul and hours into and maybe their team's pouring hours into it and then they go and they present it in the second. And it actually is like a really good plan that solves all three of the problems they uncovered in the first. And then they get the dreaded, I want to think about it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> the then dreaded, you, then right? You, then you call them every <laughs> other week. Actually. Yes. And then you chase them down. And one of the things that we coach against is the concept of you get what you pay for, right? It's, it's wired into human psychology is like free stuff is not valuable. Paid stuff is valuable. You get what you pay for all of the sayings that have been hardwired into our brains from the early days. And when you sit there and flop down this full blown plan that they have not paid for, they have not committed to, they have not a added money for, it's like, oh, they must just do this for free for everybody. So it's not that valuable. What I hear you saying is the opposite 
um, over deliver, but let's make sure there is an agreed upon process to where we are willing to do the work, but our time is very valuable. Our advice is very valuable. So we do need to be compensated for that. So give me the switch. You know, maybe it's going through the first, you uncover the problems, you add some value, you could share some cool frameworks that kind of open their mind to what's possible. But how does that transition differ between first, second, and how money is exchanged, how fee is presented, all of that? Great question. So as I create that rapport, and my hope is within that first meeting, they're saying something like, I've never heard of it that way before, or wow, I didn't even know you could do that. Because I'm, I'm awake, awakening them to the idea of like, okay, this is this is valuable. Uh, we all, it's also our job to create appropriate urgency, meaning people don't solve small problems, they solve big problems. And so if I'm in there talking about how they should fund a 529 with 500 bucks a month to fund their kid's college, and someday it might save them 20 grand, like, is that problem big enough for them to really prioritize? Or is it our job to reframe that to say, the cost of inaction is really high. If you don't fund this account and college goes up by this amount, there's a chance this is a $200,000 issue someday down the road. Is this worthwhile to you to try to solve today? I worked with a coach years ago from Red Flag Coaching. He had, he had like the ex-admiral of the SEALs would help him do some stuff. He had a really cool vibe. But one of his things was what he called the compass. And it was like on the top of the compass, we all we meet a client. We moved around the compass and we find a problem they have, but we jump to solving it. And the step we all skip is asking, is this something they actually want to solve? Mm-hmm. And so someone paying a fee answers that question. Like they're buying it. But we also have a legacy and investment only service model. If I have a client refer somebody to me and they're like, Stan, here's my statement. Will you take my money? And they're 62 years old without a lot of complexity. We'll transfer that asset over, but we're not going to give them the same experience with all the analysis as somebody that's 40 year old with two businesses that has tax issues. So I'm not telling you the, the people that are listening tomorrow, you have to start charging everybody you meet with. And in our way is the only way. What I am saying is it's really nice as a business owner that legacy now has high six figure revenue off of our time and ideas that we gave away for free which allow us to have great office space, to hire new people, to overserve our clients, to get more experts on the team. Like just the business side of monetizing that is super valuable, but there's also the benefit of clients take action a lot more when they pay for something. And it helps me now. I don't chase anybody anymore. That file that I can even just close my eyes and see when I was 25 years old of all these yellow pad papers that I was like, man, I've been calling this person for two years. They've come to three of my dinners, had a great steak, called and asked me a bunch of questions for free and I've yet to have any business from them. I reject that now. Like I want to add value up front, but we have a saying that have three and set them free. If you have three meaningful contacts with a client and they don't take action, you need to move on because there's plenty of opportunity out there and you need to reflect to say, did I met, did I miss, did I not communicate well, or there's a chance they're just not a good fit or the timing's not right. So put them on a long-term drip list and they maybe get a newsletter, but you have to move on to the next person. And, and so for us, it's, it's helped us in so many ways. And it led with me just trying. It. My mindset hadn't adopted it at first. It was like, okay, there's maybe something here. I'm meeting these clients that don't have money, but they have income and they, they can afford to pay me. So I'm just going to start asking. And my first plan was 1500 bucks to a couple that made like 400 grand a year. And I swore they were going to say no. That my head trash was so significant that I was like, I'll be your advisor for 12 months. And I don't think it's worth 1500 bucks. And I, I laugh now and advisors like that's actually the number. We've done a lot of studies and work with a lot of big companies. The average fee for the person that tries financial planning that's like super unsure and your fee is really set on like, what do I think somebody's going to say yes to? It's like 12 to 1500 bucks. And in, in exchange for that, we're going to mow their grass, drive to their house on the weekends for meetings. Like we give them oh, because we don't understand our own value. And so part of this meeting process we teach is one is to teach the clients how much value you can bring. But while doing it, the advisor is also convincing themselves that they're worth the fee. 